This is a Pioneer VSX-917V as in Victor. And I was playing it the other day and um, all of a sudden I lost the right channel for some reason. So I th thought I'd take it apart, figure it out. Wasn't looking forward to uh, dismantling this thing. It's kind of a major surgery. Unfortunately, the uh, manufacturers today don't allow you to take the bottom panel off to get access to the board. I'm running in a 400 cycle tone into the CD input. And as you can see, the left channel is okay. The right channel, no joy. But before I tore into it, and I was thinking, oh no, one of these STK modules might have gone bad. In which case, it's basically junk. But before you go crazy, turn this thing apart, watch this. Now I've got the right channel connected only. If you look at this board, this board is connected through jacks on the motherboard down here. Plus there's a bunch of uh, flat flex cables coming into it. So it appears we've got a, an intermittent problem. So I think what I'm going to try before anything else, you can see it's intermittent. I'm going to try removing this board reseating all the connectors, maybe cleaning them, and then we'll see what we get. Well this is going to be easy. I was going to pull the board out, clean the contacts, put it back on, but luckily for all of us that work on these things, the engineers at Pioneer decided that you'd have to pull the back panel off to pull the panels out here. You've got the input connectors here protruding through the back, you can't get the panel out without removing the back. So, um, I see why uh, a lot of places don't want to fix these things. Anyway, next step is going to be to pull the back panel off with all the screws. Stand by. Well, a little good news. If you pull this little plastic pin out here, it releases the board on this end. And then if we remove the screws on the back, on the input connectors and I took out um, where the main panel went on and a few others but anyway I, I removed enough screws so I could remove this now you have to lift this and pull it out and that that freed up the board here and I was able to actually remove it you got some flat flex cables and you've got some other cables but anyway this allowed me to get the board free and get it out of there so Anything to keep from completely disassembling this is okay by me. So, next step I'm going to pull this board, clean the contacts, and see if that solves our problem of no channel here, one dead channel. Another thing, while the board is out, it's a good idea to check the solder connections here, especially where the input pins are connected to the circuit board. A lot of times by inserting and, and uh, taking jacks out of these RCA jacks some of these solder points can fail so if you do one of these you might want to check solder joints. Overall the board looks pretty good and and these joints look good too. I might well there's a couple of them that are could be questionable. I'll touch them up before I put it back in. Anyway now I have access to these jacks on the uh, connections on the main board down here and I'll clean those contacts and hopefully we can get this fixed fairly simply okay let's check the right channel CD in we got it and left channel we got it looks like we got it fixed so let's see that's what the problem was, the connections on the bottom of this board. So, 
I think I'll try it, put some music on it, and I'll let it cook for a while, and we'll see if the problem returns. Hopefully not. But anyway, just taking a few of these screws out, I was able to maneuver this board out, which worked nice. I cleaned the contacts. A little bit of deoxit power booster. Boy, I tell you what, I wish I knew what this stuff was made out of. <laughs> Anyway, um, next step, I'll try some music and see how it sounds. The speakers are way on the other side of the room, but you uh, should be able to hear it. Okay, let's try the left channel. Left channel's working. Right channel. Right channel's working. Well, I guess we better put it on the dummy load because Patty's upstairs. And uh, <laughs> Anyway, I think this one's fixed. It was just an intermittent contact on this board. So if you have one of these units and it's got an intermittent or you lose one channel, before you go tearing into it, check the contact. There's a lot of, a lot of sockets in here. That uh, This unit here, I don't know how old it is. This unit's got to be maybe 20 years old I don't know let's see if there's a date on it I don't even know if there's a date on this thing yeah there is 2007 so it's a few years old it's a nice uh, receiver but boy these are not fun to work on well I hope I helped somebody that's having trouble with one of these this was a pretty simple and quick fix but um, thanks for watching we'll see you next time